All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Mr. Benish, and I am the 8B Legends Social Studies teacher. I am down next to the weight room down the, what, 8A's hallway, I guess is the best way to put it. Mrs. Sullivan and I are down this hallway. Ms. Spiegel and Ms. Otten are in the main hallway. Um, quick introduction to myself. Being a social studies teacher, I teach American history. And I want to give you a quick rundown of what my Canvas page looks like. When you come out of the Canvas page, we'll have approximately four assignments a week. Um, so I do keep them fairly busy. We start with a mini lesson, uh, which is usually 10 to 15 minutes long. And it's usually going to be some some historical perspective or some skill. And then we're going to get into the task. And so I use the terms mini lesson and task. When we get into the modules, the announcements are a good place to start. Let me show you that. The announcements are a great place to start, and you'll come in here, and I'll have information about what the day's task is. A lot of students like to jump right to the assignments, but the truth is the announcements are kind of, kind of build up. Here's where I want you to go with this. Give you some background information. On this day, we're studying the Declaration of Independence, and we're looking at the grievances that the that Thomas Jefferson and his cohorts listed as reasons why to justify the separation between the Americans and the British. And so I have this, and then I've given them a list, a Word document to download, and you'll see it's popping up here. And then I asked them to go over to the discussion board and write their answers, and that was today's assignment. I'm going to go back to home. So every day I'll have announcements and I'll link in whatever work is there. A lot of kids are jumping straight to assignments and skipping. Oh, I, I say a lot, not not a lot, but when I do find that somebody's confused, it's because they tend to jump to assignments without reading the announcements first. But any day, anywhere, anyhow, modules are also a great place to start. With the modules, first of all, I've got my office hours linked here. You can click on that and you can see office hours. Let me show you that quickly. Yeah, everything I do is quick, not really. These are our office hours. Myself here at NKC Schools is my email. My link for Mondays. Mr. Fields is on 8C. Mr. Terrell is football coach as well, and he's on Thursdays. And Miss Colgan is on Fridays. You can contact any of us any day of the week, whatever day you're having trouble. All four of us are here to help. On Wednesdays, all four of us are online at the same time. So if you want to talk to me specifically. But that's office hours. Let me go back and show you the modules. These are our five units for the year. American Revolution is going to be our first year. Unit. We're buried deep in that. We've got about two more weeks. Then we go into the constitutional period, and we'll talk about your rights as well as what the Constitution actually says. People toss around the term constitution. That's not constitutional uh, without really truly understanding what the Constitution says and what its powers are. So we'll spend some time on the Constitution. Beginning in January, we go to westward expansion, which basically falls anywhere from 1787, 1793, depending on what event we're choosing to start with, the Lewis and Clark Expedition, 1803, and we go up to about 1848, which is the end of the Mexican-American War. And so that idea of westward growth, we look at social movements during that time. We look at uh, the concept of land ownership and the clash with Native cultures. Um, we look at the, the first Industrial Revolution, not the second, just the first, the second being more known for stuff like steampunk is where steam, steampunk gets its inspiration from more of the second industrial revolution. By the way, Watkins Mill is a great example of the first industrial revolution. Great place to camp also. Unit 4 is a civil war, and this is actually a painting about the Kansas City area. The fires burning are around the Kansas City area, what we call the metro area now. Um, but this is... Of course, uh, order number four, or order number eleven, in which Union generals ordered all properties around the Kansas City area to be destroyed so that they could not support Southern sympathizers. And finally, at the end of the year, we have Reconstruction, where we try to put everything back together after the Civil War. And if you know anything about American history, you can see that we are covering some very, very, very important stuff that we still deal with today: the Constitution, the Civil War, Reconstruction. How do we move on after? A terrible hurt, and of course the American Revolution. My hope is to tie these in as much as possible so we can see where we are today and how those it connects back to the past. But for now, for navigation purposes, we have the American Revolution, and on all these images, you can click on them, and that will take you into the module.
And what I've done is broken down. I have not built out all the shells for each of the courses because I don't know how the year is going to go. But for the unit we are in, I've got information laid out here. So this will help a lot. This is our introductory unit, first week of school. I have the dates underneath that are inclusive for when we've covered. And right now we're right in the middle of this civil disobedience, fighting an unjust law. I, I've got a meme in each of them because I just thought that'd be a nice way to catch some attention. I think sometimes it goes over the heads of some of the younger ones. Um, an enduring question. When we're talking about this, there's not an absolute answer. It's not at the end of the, the, the unit you'll know the answer. There's You'll be able to formulate an answer that might be able to answer the question posed. So when is it okay to challenge the system? I think that's very topical as well. Topical as well. And then we have a list of dates. Each unit will have a timeline that will help us understand in context. And, of course, more memes. I do like the office, so I toss that in there. And down here I have presentations. These are PowerPoints. And so the PowerPoints I use with the class, if the students are in school that day, I run over the PowerPoint with them. If they are not, I also read the PowerPoint back, but add in my flavor that I would have done in class but I don't have the audience and the giggles and the, uh, the sympathy laughs of the students at that time. But these are the mini lessons read back and give some information. These two are just videos that I thought were very, very good on YouTube. So some of you parents may recognize Too Late to Apologize. The, the lyrics were changed, but the, the song is really good about the declaration, but also about a relationship that goes sour. These are the daily tasks. The day it was assigned and the tasks that were asked of the students for this one section. We have a textbook that we can use, we don't use, but it is there if the students need a little bit more support, a little more understanding what's going on around the period of study. There is a textbook available at that point, and I will put the page numbers for the, the period of study that we're in. So that just gives you an idea of what these modules look like. Um, what else do I want to make you aware of? That's the big thing. That's what it looks like. So when the kids are running behind or miss a couple of days for whatever reason, this information will be out there for them. And this will hopefully give them a better idea of where they need to be. If you go back to the announcements for specific days, let's pick one randomly. Call out a date, and hopefully I pick yours. Um... Oh, how about Fridays are awesome. Great choice. Thanks for calling that out. Uh, what I've got is I've got what I just showed you. Uh, the American Revolution Phase 2 right here. Um, and what it is, Unit 1, Phase 2, 1.2, and then Worksheet 1 or, or Lesson 1, 1.2.1. So that's whenever you see the 1 in the beginning, that's Unit 1, and this is Phase 2 of Unit 1. So I'm breaking them into subsections. Power versus Authority. So I ask you to read the announcements use the presentations, and complete the task. Let's look at, jump back a little further maybe. Um, let's try Mondays. I have the mini lesson, which is a PowerPoint. I have the recorded word, the spoken word mini lesson. The task is the assignments, and this has more information that might help them complete the task. That's what the simple, the most simplified version of an announcement is. Sometimes they're more complex, sometimes they're less complex. If we go to 9-11, it's a little more complex, there's a little more information. <clears throat> We're studying cause and effect. And so there was a cause and effect assignment. So that is going to take them everywhere they need to be. That's a little bit about what the class looks like. As far as the class goes, my job is to get them to think critically, not to tell them what to think, but how to think. I care less about that they have a, a specifically right answer and more about the process of how they got to that answer and how well they're supporting that answer with information, with other resources other than just opinion. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm trying to teach them to think critically, to defend their, their beliefs, to defend their answers, and to think deeper and make connections. I joked that social studies is the the one that subject area that's gonna make you the least amount of money, but you're gonna find the greatest 
reward because I teach you to be human. I teach you the rules of humanity. Break down th what the expectations, what the norms are in society. We are born into a world where the rules are already written and we just don't understand them because we're kids. And so I, I try to pull back the layers to help them understand what the rules of, of society are that are governing. And so we try to use those everyday rules to understand our relationship uh, in history and how that history still applies to us today. And that's my goal and that's my purpose and that's what I'm hoping they take away from this class. So thank you so much for your time. I'm looking to a, forward to a great year with your students. We're off to a great start. Great group of kids. Very much enjoying it. Please feel free to email with any questions. And thank you for your time.